Biodiversity, just like climate change, is a development issue. They both affect food security, water security, human health. They're both economic issues. Biodiversity has a lot of natural value, and we need to take that value into accounting systems, into decision making. It's a security value that when you lose biodiversity or you change climate, it displaces people in different parts of the world. It's a moral value. Why should we actually destroy nature? So it's far more, biodiversity is far more uh, than an environmental issue. One of the key conclusions of the IPBES report is we're failing to meet most of the current 20 Aichi targets. And therefore, in China next year, when they negotiate a post-2020 uh, system, I believe that targets without actions will not be meaningful. So we need to come out of China, not with potential new targets, but a set of actions. How are we going to implement ways to lead to con uh, sustainable consumption con uh, and uh, production of these ecosystems. We need several things to be done. First, we need governments to work with the private sector, to work with the NGOs, academia. We need everyone involved. Second, we need what we call cross-sectoral action. Can't look at agriculture separate from water, separate from energy, separate from transport. So we need the sectors to work together. We need to evolve uh, the economic system. We need to make sure that natural capital complements GDP and is brought into decision making. We want to eliminate these perverse subsidies on agriculture, transportation and energy. Uh, we need to embrace the circular economy. We need to stimulate incentives for uh, conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity. There's many things that are quite actionable today. Future assessments, whether on biodiversity loss or climate change, need to focus on response options. We all know what the problem is. We know that we humans are destroying nature. We know we're causing climate change. What we have to focus on is what are the plausible changes in the future between now and 2050, now and 2100? And then we have to say, what are the response options? How do we capture those sustainable futures? How do we avoid those unsustainable futures? So our focus needs to be on what actions are plausible to avoid damage, but to become a much more sustainable, socially, economically and environmentally sustainable future. There's no doubt that we need to inform decision makers in government and in uh, private sector about the economic value of ecosystems. By the, but we also have to say all the other values, the social, the cultural values that are so important, not only to local and indigenous people, but also to everybody uh, in a Western country, basically. In the best, we have diverse worldviews. What's the more Western view of nature and its relationship to human well-being? But also, what view do indigenous peoples and local communities have? They more embrace a holistic view of the Earth, where they are truly one with the Earth, where they have a concept of Mother Earth. As soon as you bring these two diverse worldviews together, you have to think about the implications of both values and how you look at nature. You can actually look at it in a very reductionist way, a whole series of services, or a much more holistic way than indigenous people, where you can't separate out the environmental, the social, the economic perspectives. One of the key findings that we had in the IPBES Global Assessment was the importance of understanding vested interests and power symmetries. We pointed out it was very important 
to have governance structures that brings everybody together, government, private sector, NGOs, academic, and indigenous and local people. But we have to be honest, in many countries, there are vested interests that, that what, like the status quo, they don't want to get rid of these perverse subsidies. They also, they have voice, whereas many poor people don't have voice. Poor people in poor countries are always adversely affected most by climate change and loss of biodiversity. So we have to recognise power symmetries, vested interest as we move forward in the future. The situation today is dire. We've wasted the last 20 or 30 years in not taking action on climate change and biodiversity. But we know what we can do. We can feed the world in a much more sustainable way. We can provide the energy in a much more environmentally sustainable way. So we've identified what technologies, what policies, what individual and corporate behavioural changes are needed. So if the governments of the world will listen, if the private sector will act, we can have a sustainable future where we can leave nobody behind, which is the goal of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So one has to be optimistic that now we know the types of actions that are needed, hopefully someone will listen.